recordings of Mr. Strauss's classes for the pure viewing enjoyment for his audience. Any rebroadcasts or other uses of this broadcast may not be used without express written consent of Mr. Strauss. <laughs> Um, Was there so an issue with that before, Mr. It's for the pure viewing enjoyment of the, li of the listeners or the viewers. All right, so I don't think people should be profiting off me. Uh, <laughs> kind of like a man dog. Kind of like someone, yes, like a man dog. All right, so um, one of the last topics we have to cover is what? Yeah, Mr. Strauss, I don't think you're getting it on the... Ah, I'll be close enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's super annoying trying to watch it and you can see what you're doing. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm just trying to help. Diamagnetic. Oh, my God. Diamagnetic. <laughs> Diamagnetic. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are OCD, I'll <laughs> <laughs> hey, Six hundred. So, die means two in Latin, right? Right, Smalley? Right. So, um, die means two in Latin. Bi <laughs> means two in Greek. So that's why in Greece you ride a bicycle, right? And in Italy you ride a dicycle, right? <laughs> I told you that before. Do you really? I haven't told you that one before? No. Okay, well then I thought I told you that joke. Up. Uh -huh. You got a little laugh out of it. Die, <laughs> two. Magnetic. So what this means is um, all electrons are paired. So that's why it's di, di meaning two, all of the electrons are coming in pairs. If you are diamagnetic, you are not magnetic. For example, magnesium. Magnesium is neon, 3s, 2. So magnesium would not be magnetic. It's not going to be attracted by a magnet. The opposite is paramagnetic, and this is why it gets confusing, because it has the prefix para, <coughs> but it's the diamagnetic which is paired up. So I, I know that kind of throws people. Sometimes people get confused because they see the word para in front, and that has nothing to do with being paired. Okay. Pair is P A I R, whereas para. Oh, no. You always got to keep your pocket <laughs> Latin dictionary close at hand in case you have to look something up. The only problem is I don't know if para is Greek or Latin. <laughs> so you get your Greek one too. I always thought para meant through. In order to. In Espanol. Is that what it means in Espanol? No, yeah. yeah. para is through. Para is through. Para and para have many different languages in my language. Oh, yeah. 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 Let's see if we have it <laughs> over here. Here he's like, this is <laughs> Spanish or something. Oh, here we go. With or on. It is Latin. Para meaning with or on. So that makes more sense now. It means 
with magnetic or on magnetic. This means you have at least <laughs> one unpaired electron. And therefore, it will be magnetic. It will be attracted by a magnet. The so paired has to be in the same orbital, correct? No, it doesn't. No. Um, so how can you have more than one? Well, I'll give you an example. When you're trying to decide if it's para or dia, you have to do the orbital diagram. You cannot just look at the electron configuration. <laughs> like with oxygen, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. If you just looked at the configuration, you might think that everybody's paired up, right? There's a pair, there's a pair, and I have two pairs right there. But that's really not the case because if you do the orbital diagram, right, you actually have two unpaired electrons. Being the same no, I said they can't. Oh, I, heard wrong. My bad. I, I think I heard you wrong. Okay. Yep, Lily. Um, okay, so now how does this relate to what we were, and how, does, how does it all connect to what my. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, <coughs> Will there be questions on the test asking whether or not something is magnetic or not? Yes, asking if it's paramagnetic. So it connects sort of in that it helps us predict a property of elements. So it's not a periodic trend. You know, we've been looking at trends like this. But um, I like using, uh, talking about this because it um, talks about properties of elements, but it also explains uh, something that I think is really neat, and that is uh, showing you an application of how Pure science has turned into applied science. Yep, Max. Could a completely stable element be a magnetic? Uh, no. Because like all the noble gases, they are the most stable, and they're not magnetic because everybody's paired up. Yep, Mark. But you can still have like a relatively stable element that's... Uh, magnetic. <laughs> yeah, because like some kind of... Like, the key was you said relatively, Max said completely. <laughs> Okay, if it's completely stable, that means everybody's paired up and it's not reacting. So but if it was missing one out of like two p six level or something, had like two p five, like that one electron would be getting like, Yeah. All right. So um, I like uh, to talk about this because um, oxygen. Oh, I forgot to say that's oxygen. It will be magnetic. It has two unpaired electrons. It will be magnetic. I'll show you a little demonstration of this. 